with the focus of, of this talk, uh, as you can see, there is on the management of pediatric infertility disorders in optoplasty, uh, with an emphasis on with an emphasis on the pediatric conditions. The topics that I will cover are the basics of the information post uh, PCR, information post endoscopic procedures, and uh, the worldwide software information in children. Uh, as far as new healing is concerned, we all know that healing in the body uh, can appear by primary or first intervention or by secondary or second intervention. Uh, Preservation of the mucosa, the fashioning of the mucosal flaps has been advocated by most centers to allow lateral and mucosal flaps to heal with first intention rather than second intention. And obviously the first intention is better because there is less intervention and there is less formation of scar tissue. Failure to achieve this is considered to be the reason for failure of endoscopic procedures in optoplasty. I come to the next uh, topic that is information post uh, DCR. Uh, failure here is related to fibrosis, which in turn is related to inflammation, which depends basically on the time taken for the surgery. The endoscopic DCR approach has in recent times been reported to be more rapid than the traditional external approach with an equivalent surgical success rate and preferred by patients who have alternative techniques for hormone and closing cycles. Failure of endoscopic DCR is reported to be as high as 50% in experienced hands, and the reasons for failure of for endoscopic DCR include granulation tissue around the tube, an atonic sac, and persistence of bone, sinusitis between the lateral nasal wall and the middle vertebrae. Bony secutes causing obstruction and fenestration in the sac. Intubation has been shown to be associated with a high failure rate because of granulation reaction induced at the ostium or the site of tube near the pulp. Coming to inflammation post endoscopic procedures in children. Inflammation after endoscopy may be due to persistent inflammation due to use of glue to fix the mesh and muscle injury occurring by manipulation of the muscle causing inflammation. These are pictures showing a post-operative hypertrophia in the first two weeks of the left eye, which is corrected by one month post-op. Uh, we have a diagnostic diagram here of a patient who has a sac which is not faded since the past seven years with matter ulcerated um, uh, nodes at the neck. Histopathology of the skin lesion showing this uh, of the skin uh, lesion from the sac area showing a casein in the We obviously know here that it is uh, tuberculosis playing a role in it. Along with tuberculosis, there is another entity that is sarcoidosis of the lateral sac. Sarcoidosis may occur in the head and the neck, even in the absence of pulmonary or any other systemic involvement. And this is important because you may have isolated cases of uh, lateral sac involvement without systemic manifestations. This is a photograph of our case here uh, with associated lesion of the lateral gland along with the lateral sac. Before I go to organ inflammation in children, uh, I would like to emphasize that there are basically four things that we look at so when we look at organ and uh, inflammation in children. Uh, one is uh, we look at the cause being either tuberculosis in a country like ours, which is endemic for tuberculosis. The other thing that we look out is for is uh, sarcoidosis. The third thing that we look out, not very really commonly uh, diagnosed in our country, is uh, a limited granulomatosis with polyagnitis. And the fourth thing is obviously the idiopathic uh, orbital inflammation. So, uh, as is advocated, we need to have a tailored approach for investigations uh, of orbital inflammation in children. And uh, the investigations that are generally requested for would be the investigations to root out tuberculosis, investigations to root out sarcoidosis, 
and the granuloma associated with polyanalysis. And these investigations will be uh, a CDC ESR, a Manto test. When you are doing a Manto test, you need to know how much tuberculin uh, unit is used and the reading is at how many hours and how much is the duration. We need to know uh, the other investigations that is uh, the topic around uh, gold DDS. These are the three which are mainly used for tuberculosis along with of course the X-ray test and the CT of the test, uh, a high resolution test CT. For sarcoidosis, the basic investigation is the serum ACT, that is angiotensin converting in that enzyme. Uh, and for the granulomatosis with polyangiitis, we are looking at ANC. Now, uh, a little of the applied anatomy here, the proximity of the paralyzer sinuses to the orbit exposes the orbital contents to the risk of inadvertent trauma during endoscopic sinus surgery. The orbit is at the greatest risk during ethmoid sinus surgery because the lamina papacia, especially at the extremes of age, is extremely thin and may be incomplete in some patients. The special features in orbital infections Due to the closed space, there is a raise, there is a rise in the intraorbital pressure, causing early and extensive slabbing of tissues. Absence of a lymphatic system means that the protection is limited by the local phagocytic elements. Infection often spreads as trauma of devices. Coming to sterilization of probes obviously prevent infections. Endoscopes may be sterilized using ethylene oxide, but this entails at least a 24 hour wait period before the instrument can be used. Therefore, usually high level disinfectants such as deuteraldehyde 2% and per acid acid 0.2% are used. Uh, we all know the Chandler's classification, which classifies the uh, sinusitis uh, into basically C3 septal cellulitis, orbital cell, uh, cellulitis, subperiosteal abscess, intraorbital abscess, and cavernous sinus thrombosis. These are basically not classification of sinusitis, they are what sinusitis can lead to in terms of orbital inflammation. There is a Jain and Rubin classification which classifies uh, orbital cellulitis as pre septal cellulitis. Orbital cellulitis with or without intracranial complications. Orbital abscesses with or without intracranial complications. Intraorbital abscesses which may arise from collection of purulent materials in an orbital cellulitis and subperiosteal abscess which may lead to true infection of the orbital soft tissues. Uh, we need to resort to microbiology and uh, literature shows that the Staphylococcus aureus and the Streptococcus species cause a majority of culture positive cases of preceptor or orbital cellulitis in children. Staphylococcus aureus is remarkable because of the increasing frequency of the MRSA in all types of infections, including periodic infections. The signs we all know that mark swelling of the lips, chemosis of the lymph, and proptosis, restriction of ocular movements, and the examination of the fungus showing papillomia. The symptoms could include pain, swelling, fever, vomiting, and loss of vision. If not treated, there will be complications which can be ocular including blindness of exposure keratopathy, optic neuritis, central retinal artery occlusion, orbital complications including subperiosteal abscesses or orbital abscesses, intracranial complications including cavernous sinus thrombosis, meningitis, and brain abscesses, and of course septicemia which could lead to death. Neuroimaging is important. This is a CT of a six-year-old boy showing a large posterior medial orbital subperiosteal abscess. What's important here is that although proptosis, pain, and external ocular movement and ophthalmopathia are associated with the presence of an abscess, 50% uh, of the patient, 50% uh, of the children, 50.5% with abscesses do not experience these symptoms. The other variables then become important and they are associated with the presence of the abscess include a peripheral blood neurofil count greater than 10,000 per liter, absence of infectious conjunctivitis, periorbital edema, age greater than 3 years, and a previous antibiotic therapy. This is an actual sonogram of the right orbit which reveals medial rectus muscle 
has temporarily replaced the displaced by the fusiform mass, medial orbital wall, and transmission of sound through the fluid field at point cell. Uh, Treatment obviously includes admission of broad spectrum antibiotic, uh, antibiotic syndrome in the The drug of choice is presently include vitamicin, ampicillin salvatum, or tetracycline and azobactam, all combinations of these. And the surgical, uh, surgical uh, uh, management would include tantrochromic antibiotic or a surgical treatment. Patients with optic nerve and retinal uh, involvement due to mass effect may require an emergent drainage and patients with a frontal sinusitis, intracranial complications or large subperiosal abscesses with significant discomfort require an emergent drainage. Uh, age is a factor in bacteriology and the response to treatment as humans age their subperiosteal abscesses become more complicated in terms of organisms, numbers and types and do not respond as well to antibiotics and require surgical drainage more often. Patients less than 9 years of age make clear subperiosteal abscesses without surgical drainage more often than their older counterparts. Patients younger than 9 years of age with subperiosteal abscesses therefore may be expectantly observed. These patients if observed, would require frequent assessment of the secondary reflex to prevent any visual loss. Finally, to conclude, there are certain systemic conditions which are bound to cause inflammation. Inflammation thus becomes a major prognostic factor in the surgical outcome in pediatric cosmoplasty as in all other specialties. And it is necessary to rule out the conditions which cause inflammation before any procedure and whenever there is an intense inflammation post-procedure. Thank you.